Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. Today we're going to make a basket. <laughs> you can make this plain in any color you want or decorate it to make it a little more seasonal. And don't just think egg hunts. A basket like this is great for all sorts of things. You can keep collections of candy, your kids Lego, small balls of yarn, maybe your entire crochet hook collection, even those pesky remote controls that keep going missing. <laughs> That's what we're going to do today. So let's grab our hooks. Grab our yarn, head on over to the craft table, and stitch ourselves up a basket. For our egg baskets, you're going to want about 100 grams of worsted weight size 4 yarn. I'm using acrylic. You're going to split that in half so that you can hold two strands together throughout this project. This will give us nice, stiff, thick fabric for our baskets. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and a slightly larger hook. I'm using a 7 millimeter hook today. And once you've got all of that, we can get started. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. Remember, we're holding two strands of yarn together, and that might take a little bit of getting used to. Once you've got your cinch circle, you're going to work eight single crochets into it. So try not to split your yarn up. Remember that those two strands held together actually count as one thick piece of yarn. Once you've got eight single crochets, grab your short tail, which is two strands, cinch the whole thing shut, and we are going to Continue working in the round, so we're not joining our row, we're just going to work directly into the first single crochet we made. Next row, we're going to double up our stitch count, we're going to work two single crochets into every stitch all the way around, and that will give you a count of 16 at the end of row two. Two single crochets into every stitch. At the end of row two, you'll have 16 stitches. We're still increasing. And now we're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that. So that is the pattern for row three. Two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that. At the end of row three, you'll have 24 stitches. At the end of row three, you'll have 24 stitches. We're still increasing, so for row four, we're going to increase that pattern once more. Two single crochet into the next stitch, or the first of your set. And then single crochet into each of the next two. You can repeat that little pattern of two, one, one, all the way around, and you'll have 32 stitches at the end of row four. That's 32 stitches at the end of row four. We're still increasing, so for row five, we're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch, and then single crochet into each of the next three. So that's the pattern, two, one, one, one. Repeat it all the way around, and at the end of row five, you'll have 40 stitches. That's the end of row five. You should have 40 stitches all the way around. We've got one more row of increasing to do. So we're going to begin our row with two single crochets. And then single crochet into each of the next four. So your pattern is two in the first stitch and then one into each of the next four stitches or two, one, 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 all the way around. And at the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches, and that will be it for increasing. This is the end of row six. You should have 48 stitches, and that's it for the bottom of our basket. We're just going to slip stitch into the very next stitch, just to finish off that bottom. And now we're going to create a nice ridge for our bottom of our basket. So what we, gonna, we wanna do is take this last row that we did and force it 
to sit down. And we're going to do that by working around the post of every stitch from the row previous. So we're going to chain one to begin. And the way you can get the post of a stitch to pop up on your hook, so we're working around the inside, so not the outside, but the inside of our stitches. Take your hook, poke it out from back to front through the first stitch, so right underneath the first stitch, and then push it back through the stitch next to it, and there's the post of that stitch. It pops up on your hook, and that's what you can single crochet around. So you single crochet as normal, the first one's always a little bit tricky. And that's how you single crochet around a post. Let's do the next one. So you see how the stitch that you, you came back out of sits up a little bit? That's where you want to put your hook through to begin the next one. And then push it back out through the stitch next to it. That pops the post up on your hook. You can just single crochet around it. Try to make sure you keep both of those strands going. So this is a row that you can take a little bit of time with. But what it's doing is it's forcing the edge of that row down a bit. And it's going to create this nice flat little edge for the bottom of our basket. I'll do the next one with you. There's where I need to put my hook through. You see how the stitch is lifted a little bit? So hook goes back to front. Right through the very next stitch, front to back. That highlights my post. I'll just pull up a loop on my hook and single crochet. There you go. Take your time. Don't miss any of the posts. You should still have 48 stitches at the end of row 7. And I will see you back round at the beginning. At the end of row 7, you should still have 48 stitches, and it should look something like this. So you're working around the inside post of your last row, forces the row to sit down, the next row sits on top of it, it's kind of a cool edge, really neat ridge, and it makes for a nice flat bottom to your basket. And now the easy part. You're just going to continue working in the round, so no slip stitching, just single crochet right into that first stitch you made. It's all regular single crochet now. You're going to work single crochet in every stitch all the way around for rows 8 to 17. 8 to 17. So once you're finished row 17, you should still have 48 stitches, and I'll catch back up with you there. At the end of row 17, you should have a nice stiff little basket. It's got a little flat bottom, and it sits up. And now we want to add one more row to make the edge nice and stiff. So once you've completed 17 rows and you know your background to the beginning, because here's a little switch up where you chained one, slipped, or I should say slip stitched and chained one to make row number seven. So right above that little spot, you're going to do the same thing. So slip stitch, that finishes off row 17. We're going to chain one. And now we're going to do another round the post crochet row, but we're going to do it on the opposite side. So we're going to do it on the outside. This one's a lot easier because it's easy to see. You're not working from the inside out. You're actually working from the outside in. So you stick your hook through the first stitch and back out through the one next to it. That highlights the front of your post. And you can just single crochet around that. Hmm, try not to split your yarn. <laughs> Once more. So this one is being pulled, that's where we want to put our hook in, back out through the one next to it, and single crochet around that post. And what that's going to do is the opposite of what it did for us on the bottom. So where it turned row 6 outward, this is going to turn row 7, 17 I should say, inward, and it's going to give us this nice thick little edge, and it will help create a stiff base for our basket. Don't want our basket collapsing in on our eggs, after all. <laughs> so, go ahead, work around the outside of the post of every stitch from row 17. This is your last row. You should still have 48 stitches at the end, and I'll see you back around at the beginning. Once you're finished row 18, you should have something that looks like this on the top. 
So see this nice wide brim and an edge that looks like this. Nice and stiff. And now you can just join with a slip stitch to that first stitch where it turns down that you began row 18 with. Slip stitch to join. And that is it for the bottom of our basket. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off. And then grab your yarn needle and you can weave in your tails. So I like to pull everything through to the inside of the basket. So it can be nice and neat and tidy here. There we go. And then just go back and forth through the underside of those stitches. Until all your yarn is woven in. going to make the handle. So we're still holding two strands of worsted weight together. We're going to begin with a slip knot. And then you're going to chain 35. Once you have 35 chains, we're going to continue our single crochet. We're going to skip the first stitch find the next one and single crochet into it and you're going to single crochet into every chain all the way back to the beginning you'll have 34 stitches at the end of row one at the end of row one chain one flip your work and you're going to repeat this for two more rows. So single crochet into each stitch across, you'll still have 34 stitches, chain one at the end, turn your work, and single crochet back again. At the end of row three, you should still have 34 stitches in a nice, straight, narrow rectangle, something like this. Now you're going to cut yourself a long strand of yarn, somewhere in the neighborhood of, ooh, 24 inches, 60 centimeters. This is going to be what we use to do a little sewing with. Make sure you fasten off. Grab your yarn needle and the first thing you want to do is weave in these little short tails, get them out of your way. Once you've woven in your little short tail, thread up your two long ones and you're going to Poke your needle underneath the first four, so one, two, three, four, the first four stitches in that last row you did. Pull your entire thread, so all of that working yarn, through. Try not to make it tight. There we go. And now we're going to make our strap. We're going to pinch the strap in half. So you've got one, two, three, four stitches. Your yarn's coming out just underneath the first one. You can actually bring it out to the outside, so underneath that, that stitch. Pinch your strap together. Count one, two, three, four chains in from the opposite side. And work a stitch around the entire bottom, nice and tight, so that you get something that looks like that. Now keeping your strap squeezed together, you're going to basically sew the whole thing through each set of stitches, so a chain and a stitch, both opposite each other, all the way down. It's going to twist a little, don't worry, it won't be twisted once we get it attached to our basket. But you want to sew the whole thing shut until you get to the end and you're about four stitches away from the end. So you want to stop here and leave this part open just like you did so that it looks the same on the opposite side. So go ahead, sew those two long edges together and I'll see you at the other end. Once 
once you're finished sewing that edge together, you should have something that looks like this. It looks like a handle. <laughs> and if you have yarn left over, that's great. You can just bring it through the back stitch, so the back underside of the last four stitches, in preparation for sewing down that edge of the handle. If you've got a little bit of the extra yarn left, uh, extra yarn, <laughs> pull it out the end. You can sew down the, that edge of your basket handle onto your basket. If not, just knot it off and weave in whatever you have left on the inside of your handle. You can always attach another strand here. Now it's time to attach the actual handle to our basket. So I'm going to use, this as the back. This is where I did my little, sort of my row changes and my, my little switch up to my internal and external post single crocheting. So I'm going to put that to the back. And I'm going to attach my basket handle so that it is going across either side with the back of my basket over here. So I'm going to take the flat end and I'm going to sew it through, in and out, through the handle and the basket, just underneath the lip of my basket here, using the two strands that are left. And I can either use them separately or together, it doesn't matter. You might need a little extra yarn than this, I might actually end up needing extra, because I want to make sure that my basket handle is on nice and tight. I don't want the thing coming off, especially not when it's full of eggs, that could be really messy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to lay it across the inside, so just underneath the lip. I'll get this out of the way here so you can see it. There's the lip of the basket. It's just across the underside of it. I'm going to bring the first stitch all the way through underneath that lip, and then over the next stitch, all the way through, and back out the bottom of my handle. And I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth, underneath the lip of the basket a few times. I'm going to run out of yarn here, so make sure you have a nice long strand. If you've done what I've done and you need to attach more, you can just knot this off, cut a whole new length, and sew it back down. I'll do that on the other side, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I've got one handle down. I'm going to spin my basket around. Make sure that my handle bottom is nice and flat. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side, making sure that it's fairly even across the middle. I've cut a long strand of yarn, and I'm going to double it up so it's in the middle. I've got both my ends together, and I'm going to tie a little knot. So I've doubled up my sewing yarn. I'm going to attach it to the underside, so I'm going to run it through a couple of stitches all the way until I get to where the knot is, and then loop through it, and I'll just weave in those little tails later. But now it's on nice and tight. I'm going to bring it out the top, or I should say the bottom corner. There we go. see here. That's about even. I've already brought it through to this side, so I'm going to poke my needle through right there underneath the lip, and then hop over a stitch under the lip, back through, so all the way through to the inside of the basket, to the next stitch on my handle. Pull nice and tight, so I'm all the way through, and then through the handle, through the basket, all the way out the other side. Skip a stitch, through the basket, find the handle, and I'm going to sew back and forth at least three times, because I don't want that handle to come out. Once you're satisfied that your handle's on nice and tight, you can snip your yarn. Try and keep some of it in your, threaded up on your needle though. Take that threaded piece and just pass it underneath some neighboring stitch. And then you can knot both your ends together. And 
And then you can grab your needle, weave them back and forth, and then stuff them up inside the handle of your basket. Once your basket's all finished, you can leave it plain, or you can decorate it. I've got some cute little eggs here <laughs> that I made um, in a previous tutorial. I'll put the link in the description box down below for that. If you're going to make it an applique, remember the last row after you fasten off, leave a nice long tail and then you can sew on your applique using that long tail. And I've got a couple of nice bright eggs here that I'm going to sew on to the front of my little basket. And I'm going to slightly overlap them. I'm going to put them just off to the side. And if you've never sewn down an applique to a project like this before, you have a couple of options. You want to grab your yarn needle, thread up that long tail, and you can do a couple things. You can pin down your applique in place where you want it. So if you like that sort of sitting off to the side or wherever it is you want it, especially if you're going to overlap, whatever you're doing on the bottom, that gets sewn down first. You can pin it to keep it in place, or if you're satisfied that you can hang on to it, you can keep it sort of in place with your thumb while you sew. You can sew back and forth through your basket if you want, but that will leave color on the, the inside. If you're not too picky about that, then that's an easy, simple way to sew it down. But if you want to be neater, you can do what I do, and pick up a little piece of a stitch on the front of your basket, and then go through the whole stitch on the side of your egg. If you're holding it in place, stop every so often to make sure it's still sitting where you want it. And then peek, pick, pick up a piece of a stitch and a piece of the egg. And you'll notice that nothing shows through to the other side. So you can go ahead, sew down an applique if you're going to add one. Once you've sewn down your egg or your applique, Notice there's nothing showing through to the back there because I went through pieces of the top of the stitches all the way around. You can give it a little bit of a knot. Hold that nice and tight. And then weave it back and forth underneath some of the stitches across the top of your egg. And then just a few underneath, and that should be that. Snip your yarn. And now you can add your second one. So I'm going to overlap these two. So I'm going to thread up number two, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to use stitches across the top of the basket and now also across the top of my other applique. I can pin it down if I feel I need to or try and hold it in place. Pull back every so often, make sure it's still in the right position and keep sewing. And that's what it looks like when you overlap the two. See, I picked up stitches across my first applique and then all the way around and still nothing showing through to the inside. So that's a nice neat way to add a couple of appliques to a project like this. And once you're all finished, well, now you can go collect some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> One basket. Now I've decorated mine using eggs to make it a little seasonal, but you can decorate your basket to suit any style, season, or theme that you're after. We've done a ton of appliques on the show here, and we've put an entire list of them, so a whole playlist of our favorite appliques together, and you can find that link in the description box down below. That's it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until next time, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye! <laughs>